Today I'm going to demonstrate a horizontal cleavage tear repair. This is a very young athlete uh, with a significant horizontal cleavage tear as you can see here on the MRI images. Initially under scope it's hard to identify this horizontal tear. You need to remove the very small strip of the white white junction of the meniscus to access this horizontal cleavage tear. There's been a significant amount of more research over the last few years demonstrating that these tears can do well and have good repair ability if repaired properly and in the right patient population. In certain patients with good tissue otherwise, we'll perform this repair as we want to maintain the biomechanics of the meniscus, especially in patients under 30 years old. Here we're going to break up the loculations of the tear, and this is a pretty large tear. It extends all the way from the root to close to the anterior horn. This can be difficult to repair with different devices. You will see that we will use a curved first pass. This mini device has a slight advantage because the curve can access more of the anterior horn. We will taper off any of the remaining white white junction so we have good access to the tear. We are further cleaning any loculations. You can see the extent of this horizontal meniscus tear. After completion of this with the shaver, ball rasp, and biter, we'll prepare for fixation. Here we again are preparing with the ball rasp the meniscus tear all the way back to the capsule. This will allow for better healing potential. Following this, we will do trephination into the capsule to allow for maximum bleeding potential and stem cell aggration. You can also see that we've done trephination, especially on medial sides, to open up the joint to prevent damage from the condyles. We place a passport cannula. We will switch the cannula between the medial and lateral portals depending on the angle. Here we are coming from the opposite angle. This is the first pass mini. You can see we've loaded a mini tape. This is 0.9 millimeters. And then we'll do sequential ties and alternating half hitches. Care is taken to make sure you secure the knots well enough to compress the tear together. You can see with the angle portion of the mini pass, you're able to get fairly far anterior. And then each time we will sequentially tie this. We try to space these ties out between three to five millimeters to add maximum compression, but also allow for adequate healing potential and to not over constrain the meniscus. Each time we're making sure to leave very small tails as not to damage the knots. Again, these are smaller than the standard tape suture. These will synovialize later after healing of the meniscus. In this patient, we already had four sutures. We decided that after probing, we're able to identify there's further tearing extending farther into the root. We cleaned this irritated it and passed one more suture using the mini pass. You can see with the angle you can tilt your hand to get it out without causing significant damage to the condyles. Sequential tying is performed again for our final fixation using a hay barrel technique. Again this has demonstrated high success rate in newer studies especially in younger patients with good quality tissue and these horizontal tears you do not run them remove as there will be increased biomechanical loss to the knee and higher risk for further progression of arthritis. You can see here we have an excellent repair and then we'll do marrow venting to promote stem cell aggression. Thank you. Mm -hmm.